Okay, for today, we are starting our spot illustration assignment. So if we scroll past the midterm and our logo, you'll see assignment seven. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up this, these slides, an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. This is more in depth than you need, but as in depth as you might want, depending on your interest level in how this process works. We have a one page breakdown of the assignment as a PDF that you can view and print, you know, download to your device. And basically, we're trying to create an image that's our, our own original idea that isn't locked within a rectangle, right? That's free floating. That's what makes it a spot. And we're gonna finalize this project as a raster project. But I'm gonna show you some different ways in which vector imaging can be helpful. And I actually included here the resource that your classmates created about the comic book process, right? Because this is a really great example of digital coloring and digital inking. You know, they, they cover it in their presentation. So let's go to where we post it. And that's where I give some specific examples. It's where we're going to post our sketches today and work from there. So a spot illustration is the kind of di digital image that's perfect for a sticker, a t-shirt, a tattoo design. Like a logo, it should work on a variety of backgrounds, but unlike a logo, it can be a lot more detailed and stylized, right? Because it's not, it doesn't need to be quite as versatile where it can be a postage stamp or the side of a truck. A spot illustration is generally done for a specific purpose, like either as a tattoo or as a t-shirt design. So you wanna think about how you wanna stylize it. The requirements of this approach is not only that it's a spot illustration, but that it's a, a spot illustration that's based on line art. So here are some examples of line art, of inking that goes on top of color, right? Here's a very simple example of digital coloring. The line art would be just this black line. And ideally, that would be a vector, though we'll look at some different ways to get smooth line art, digital inking. And then the digital coloring is all the stuff that goes behind and eventually on the top of that line art. You can also find a link to this in our links page. This is um, an image you can download that helps, especially when we talk about color separation and printing. And I talk about it a lot here in these slides. So looking at tattoo art, this is called flash art, right? These are actually all done digitally, though they look handmade. And the process is pretty simple. This is Nathan Yoder, a, a digital artist I like based in Oregon. And he does a little pencil sketch. He then inks it. Sometimes he inks it traditionally and scans it in. Sometimes he inks it digitally. And then he he uses um, raster color, you know, Photoshop to, to color behind his line work. And that's what you're seeing here. Here's another artist. This is, comes from a Behance portfolio. It's by an artist, David Sosella. And Behance is another place. It's like all full of Adobe portfolios. It's another place where you can find really good artists to present on. And you can see that his line art here is all a vector. He includes this image to prove that these are all vectors, you know, and perfectly smooth because you can see the anchor points. And you can see his pencil sketch. It's a very refined sketch. And then of course, you can see the, the details of the digital color behind. And it's free floating. It's not cut off. 
It can work on a variety of backgrounds. It's a good example of a spot illustration. We have some past student examples. And I say in this project that it's okay for you to be inspired by something that's already out there, but it still should be your original creation at the end of the day, right? So this, this past student artist, very inspired by a certain type of, of fan art. And they, they were looking at kind of online tutorials. So they based their coloring on it and different techniques base the width of their line art on it, but it's their own original drawing. And you can see how they rendered that out. So though I don't want you to do fan art just to do fan art, it is helpful to have kind of templates of illustrations that are already out there in the world that really inspire what you do, whether they're digital or traditional. Okay. So we have some sketches posted, fantastic. And then the sketch I'm gonna use, I thought I had posted, but I haven't. So let me post that. So the only issue I see with, yeah, I think you're gonna address it with this as a, um, a spot illustration is this doesn't give a whole lot of room for coloring behind it. So you want to make it different than a logo, right? So that there's spaces within it to color. Like this. And so I like how this is kind of opening it up a bit. Maybe inside these marks, we could have coloring or there could be coloring behind it. So kind of like, like a, this, you know, like a watercolor style be okay. Yeah. Whatever. We'll go over a lot of different coloring styles, but just so there's room for coloring, just because that design looks very much like it's based just on black shapes, you know, which is closer to the logo project. But here coloring is going to be a lot more important. All right. We can also go to Imgur. And we can see past student examples, and this can inspire your sketches and your ideas. So this is assignment seven. Everything's a bit slow. I'm going to close some stuff. Always good to kind of clean up your processes on your Monday. Not have anything open you don't need open. Come on. All right, we could check back on this a little bit later. Imgur is seeming to take a long time right now. So the first thing you need is a sketch. And I said I would do a skull theme this semester. So what I did is I found some inspiration, um, some nice kind of scientific spot illustrations. Right? about how a skull looks, some medieval spot illustrations. So these are, before they were illustration, they were illuminations. They are images hand-painted into uh, books, codices made of animal skin. And these might be like the gospels of the medieval Christian church, or they might be individual books of prayer for no nobility in the Middle Ages and in the Renaissance. And then the printing press is what took over from this hand painting process, slowly, and woodblock prints, and then eventually etchings and engravings, and then lithographs took over. So it's interesting to look at, at really early illustrations. And then as I often do, I was sketching, 
and kind of coming up with an idea. And I started with the skull and then just really overdid it. Now this is a good spot illustration. It would work as a tattoo design. It would work as a t-shirt design. It's a little ambitious for what I can do as a demo in this class and next class. So just like the logo, it's often good to, to start big and then to simplify and simplify for the good of being introduced to this project. So I'm going to focus on this part of the sketch. You know, a pretty intense little tattoo design. Or spot illustration for a, uh, a horror novel or something. And I'm using that term a lot, spot illustration. So we all know that Harry Potter books have cover illustrations. You know, this kind of thing. This was a wraparound cover for one of the books. But at the beginning of each chapter, Harry Potter has spot illustrations. And so these are free floating little illustrations at the beginning of each chapter, right? And so that is what a spot illustration is. It's not contained by a rectangle. So you can see how that can work as a, a tattoo, as a sticker, as a t-shirt design. So that's what I mean by spot illustration. This is not a good spot illustration because it is contained in a rectangle. So this is instead like a full cover illustration or a full page illustration. So if I was gonna turn this into a spot illustration, I might just illustrate the wizard here, the picture of Dumbledore, and then let that be free floating. So remember, we want free floating illustrations. This is an example of a spot illustration from the new illustrated editions. But we're not just looking for any spot illustration. We're looking for a spot illustration that is based on line art. So this is a nice example. This looks like fan art, but notice that there is clear line art. Even though this is just watercolor and ink, this could work well for digital spot illustration and that it's free floating. It's making its own shape. It works well as a sticker, as a tattoo design, etc. All right. And because you're a student, if you wanted to do something on an existing property like Harry Potter, you can under educational fair use. Just don't profit from it. It's just part of your educational portfolio. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start by posting my sketch. Here's the reply. Here it is. There's a new entry there. And your, your sketch can be as loose as you like it to be because we're going to be digitally inking it and refining it through the computer. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time shading your sketch because we're going to do a lot of that in the digital coloring. So here is my sketch example. So the first step is to digitally ink it. So if we look at the assignment page, right here, that midterm uh, presentation goes through the, the process of a comic book, which is the same kind of process we're gonna learn for creating a spot illustration and coloring behind line art. And so the first step of making a comic book illustration is penciling it, and then the next step is digital inking. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. I wanna show you the resources so you don't think my way is the only way.